What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the Fox Den. Today we got something a little different for you guys. Today we're going to be working on this beast. The, I believe it's a 99, 98, uh, Yamaha SRX 700 uh, power valve snowmobile. This sled, let's put it this way, it's fucking fast. Um, it does have dirty carburetors right now. Uh, it's been sitting all summer, so we have to clean them out and we're going to do a little vlog today on it. Uh, it's a shorter vlog today, not a big deal, but uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, a little different from the G37, which is idling over there. Uh, that idle sounds good. So, we're going to tear it apart, and I'm going to show you guys me struggle doing it. Yeah, it's going on November now, and uh, we're going to be getting snow soon, so I kind of have to get it going, because as soon as I get snow, uh, or at least enough snow, uh, to be able to use this thing, I'm going to rip it around. And you guys aren't going to want to miss that, especially when we go on our uh, snowmobiling trips. Uh, 110 miles an hour across the lake with this thing. It's wicked. So, yeah, stick around for the vlog. Uh, this is kind of more like just a regular video focused on that, but I figured I'd kind of put a little bit of vlog into it. So, uh, we're going to clean it up, maybe get a couple cinematic shots of it, although it's not going to really leave the garage, but I'll, I'll do my best. And uh, I'll just kind of update you guys on what's going on, what's coming up as far as content goes, and go from there. Now, next vlog is going to be a cool one. I'm not going to give away what it is yet, but you guys are gonna enjoy it, so make sure you're subscribed, and uh, let's get on with it. All right, so a little quick update on the Jeep. I did top off the coolant. I did have a coolant leak last year, and then it mysteriously stopped, and I drove all summer with the coolant just a little low, because I'm a moron, and no issues, hasn't leaked since, so we'll see if it starts leaking again. I don't know where the hell it was coming from, but uh, yeah, you can see we've got coolant in the reservoir, uh, just below the max line, so this thing is set for winter. The heat's working great, and haven't driven this thing in a few days because the weather's been terrible. I'm trying to keep it clean for the next vlog. Yeah, I don't want to say what it is yet, but uh, anyway, let's get to work on this snowmobile. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, it does run, actually, but it runs poor. So before we get to work on that snowmobile, I just want to show you guys this. Oh yeah, got a Chicago Lane Changers hoodie. Shout out to Moogie and Billy. This is some fine, fine merch. And it's so fine that I'm not going to wear it out there because I don't want to ruin it. So, yeah, go to their website. Uh, I believe it's dreams2reality.shop. Pretty awesome. Let's get to work on the snowmobile. We have to get all this stuff out of the way and I'm going to slide this thing over that way so you can get to it. Uh, this is not a tutorial, I'm just going to kind of get you some shots of it and uh, kind of explain what I'm doing. Uh, this is not meant to be a tutorial by any means. Alright, I have gotten it slid over a bit. Let's pop the hood and watch that spring because it seems like every snowmobile I have has an issue with that. Oh yeah. Yep, I don't recommend you doing it like this, but I'm not fixing that spring right now. And here's the heart of the beast. This is the three-cylinder, or the triple, as it's known as. 700cc two-stroke engine with the power valves. And it's got the triple pipe, so it's also known as the triple triple. Completely stock, factory exhaust. I'm not going to do anything to this. It's already plenty fast. And also, uh, I'm not a fan of uh, loud two-strokes. That's just me, especially on snowmobiles. I don't know, they just kind of go right through me. I don't really like them. This thing actually sounds uh, pretty good already, so no need to mess with it. There are the carburetors down there. And yeah, it looks uh, a lot harder than it actually is. Really, the key is to getting this air box out, which isn't that hard, and the filter's gone, of course. So we gotta remove that, and then that's that opens up a lot of room to uh, get to those things basically uh it, you can only run it on choke is uh, pretty much uh what the deal is and when you do run it on choke it runs really awful so but it does run i'm not going to start it because i don't want to get it hot but that's what's going on so yeah i'm going to get set up we got to get this air box removed that's the first thing we're going to start by removing that bolt there to 
uh, break this coolant reservoir free from the airbox. And then uh, we got to remove that line up there and the bolt for the power valve assembly there has to be removed. And yeah, it looks difficult, but it's not as difficult as you would think. Um, so anyway, again, I'm not going to show you uh, me doing this. This is just a vlog and I'm just kind of documenting it. So. Right, so the coolant reservoir is loose, as you can see right there. And I have removed this uh, hood scoop assembly, which helps cool the engine. So already you can see there is quite a bit more room in there. Yeah, like I said, not as hard as it looks. But let's keep going. Next we have to remove this bolt, which looks to be about a 10 mil. And we're going to remove this uh, line here. I'm not really sure what it's for. Probably some kind of breather line. And we're going to remove this top cover with these Phillips screws. And then we're going to remove the power valve control module here, whatever you want to call it. Or which is two screws right there. That right there will make a ton of room and then it's just kind of a matter of getting it off the carburetors it's really not it's that simple it's not really that hard and then move from the carburetors and uh, we can uh, get them out so after a lot of swearing and a lot of dancing around with these cables that are holding the cover on basically I got the top of the air box out there it is right there now we got to get the bottom of the air box out which uh, you can see it's pretty loose it's Pretty much what's holding it in now is the power valve assembly and then the carburetor boots. So, yeah, let's get at it. And just like that, air box is out. And you can see much more room in there now. So now we gotta remove these clamps on the back of the carburetors, which in theory will allow them to be removed minus the uh, disconnection of these fuel lines here. And interestingly enough, these carburetors, unlike the other sleds, appear to be liquid cold. Luckily, there is a valve here in which we can turn it off and stop coolant from going all over. So, fun, fun. All right, got the carburetors uh, not out, but accessible. You don't have to take them completely off the sled. You can leave these cables and all that sort of thing on there. You just have to disconnect these uh, coolant lines on each side and the... Uh, not these the fuel lines that go right here yeah just another difference between the SRX and the the V max over there which is the regular uh, version of this uh, this has liquid cooled uh, throttle bodies uh, on top of the power valves and the bigger cylinders and I had to disconnect quite a bit of wiring to get it out of the way um, this is a little more complicated than that V max just because it's got a lot more stuff on it to improve performance although I uh, think liquid cooled carburetors are definitely up in the air as to whether or not that actually helps performance but nonetheless they are sitting here out of their spot get a good look in there the sled is pretty clean uh, it's well, I mean it's dirty but yes but it's pretty free from rust uh, didn't have any problems breaking any screws loose. They were all real easy, so uh, the sled's in pretty good shape. So now we got to drop these bowls and see what's in them. And we're going to remove the jets. Uh, based on the behavior that it was doing, I suspect it's going to have dirty idle jets. And the main jets might be fine, but we're going to clean those anyway, just in case. And then we get to do that all in reverse and see if it runs. So... I'll show you guys what uh, one of these bowls looks like in just a moment. Here's what the first bowl looks like. It's actually pretty clean. There's some gunk in there, but not much. But notice that. See that there? That's not supposed to be sitting in there like that. That's supposed to be right there. So somebody's been in here. And they did not put it uh, back together properly. Uh, that could be the, uh, the whole issue right there. But there is some sludge in there. Not much. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because uh, you don't want these to be all corroded. So uh, we're going to put that back in the right way and we're going to pull the jets. Uh, we'll do one carburetor at a time just so it's easier to keep track of parts. And I'll show you guys uh, what we got going on with these jets. But I more than likely there's going to be stuff in the jets. I hope there's stuff in the jets. Otherwise uh, the only thing I can think that's clogging this thing is... Uh, this not being where it belongs. I'm taking back what I said about there not being much sludge in there. This came out of there pretty nasty. 
And there is sludge in there. It almost looks like crap you'd find in a fish tank or something. Yeah, let's get a good shot of that. Oh yeah. Yeehaw. Yep. Yummy. So yeah, there's definitely crap caught in those jets. We'll get a look at those in a second. All right, we have the idle jet out and I don't know if the camera is going to be able to focus in on this. You can see there is no daylight in there. You cannot see through this thing at all. There should be a little tiny dot of light showing through there and there's nothing. So this jet is clogged and I'm going to guarantee you all three of them are clogged like this. Hence why it does not want to stay running. So basically we're going to soak this in some brake cleaner. I prefer to use brake cleaner over carb cleaner because it is a little bit stronger. But I would imagine it's probably not. I would imagine uh, it's probably not very good for gaskets and such but you know what it'll be fine so before we try uh, cleaning out that jet we're gonna soak this in the brake cleaner because otherwise it's never gonna happen let that soak for about 10 minutes or so so here's the main jet and you can see right through it uh, these don't tend to clog very much because uh, they're pr quite large so that's all good so we can put that back in but it doesn't hurt to check them. Then we gotta run a wire through that idle jet and then put them back in. Before putting them back in, we're gonna run compressed air through these, uh, which is quite easy. And then uh, make sure we get all the gunk out of them. And then after that, put them back together and then we can start putting these things back in. All right, you guys, we finished the first two carburetors. I still have to open up this one. Um, we're gonna do that right now. And then after that's all clean, uh, we're going to put it back together and hopefully hear it run. I'm gonna start it without the air box just in case something isn't right and I have to go back in there, but I think it's gonna be okay. Both of the pilot jets were clogged, both this one and this one, uh, and there was some sludge in the bowls. So I'd imagine this one's gonna be the exact same way. So pretty uh, simple little issue that causes uh, this thing not to run uh, without the choke usually is related to the idle jet. So, cause the main jet was completely squeaky clean. I didn't even have to soak it, so or the main jets, I should, I should say, both of them were perfectly clean, no issues, so. Anyway, I'll get back to you once that's finished. All right, the carburetors are all cleaned out. So we are going to go ahead and try to put this thing back together. I'm gonna hook up the power valve assembly and I'm not gonna put the air box in because I wanna make sure it runs right before I put it all back together and then, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll run much better. All right, so the carburetors have been reinstalled. I have hooked up the power valve assembly uh, back to its wiring harness. I'm gonna try it without the air box to make sure it works and hopefully it will run and keep running. Now, uh, it's gonna take some time to get the fuel system reprimed. So uh, I put some, uh, just a little bit of brake cleaner in the cylinders which to give it a little kick so it may start up and then die out. It's gonna take some time for it to prime up, so. I'm going to wear hearing protection because sometimes these sleds like to really backfire. That blows your ears out, so. This may happen here with it trying to prime up. Yep, so it's gonna take some time to get the fuel system primed. may have to spray fluid in there a couple times. together the hood is lashed down she moves 
smoke is clearing up. It's idling good. These were supposed to idle a little high. For those of you who are uh, in the snowmobiles, they're supposed to idle kind of high like this. The torque converter doesn't gauge until about 5,000 RPM or so, which gives you a real nice launch. But she is ready. We just need some snow. Now we just gotta clean her up a bit. Maybe a coat of wax. It'll be good. <laughs> oh my god, my freaking eyes are burning. But uh, smoke's clearing up. Uh, it takes a while. It really needs to be run hard uh, in order to get it all out of the system. But they're supposed to smoke. They're two strokes. So, yeah, we got it running. And, uh, I'm a little quiet because I'm tired now. But uh, anyway, guys, this uh, next week we have a vlog coming out. It's going to be exciting. I won't tell you what it is yet because it's kind of a surprise. But it's going to be a fun one. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed today's vlog. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and join the Fox Pack today. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at SilverFoxG37. Remember, life is too short to stay stuck, and it's only illegal if you get caught. Stay foxy. Hey.